Hi everyone. Uh, hello, uh, Emmanuel Nyolet. Uh, we are very happy to welcome you here in North Perth Sandara uh, to have this discussion uh, today. Um, so we will talk about um, cultural uh, adaptation and why it can be very difficult sometimes. Um, but first, I will introduce uh, Lors Per Samdara and then we will introduce our ourselves. Uh, so Lars Per Samdara is a national observatory um, which is working on a topic of health, mental health and um, migration and um, also precariousness. Um, so we work on many topics, uh, we conduct researches and uh, we also have um, a physical space where we welcome people in Lyon uh, that is called L'Espace and um, where I actually work as a coordinator. And uh, so today we will discuss this topic. We are very, very happy and I will let Emmanuel Nolet introduce ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me today. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, whenever you'll be watching this. Uh, I am a clinical psychologist and ethnoclinician. I have been working in Lyon since 2006, both in French and in English, after I came back from having lived abroad for over 25 years, one and off, on and off. Uh, therefore, I base my so-called expertise on my personal experience of having had to adjust to uh, living in a different cultural environment, adjusting, changing, starting from a very young age until I was actually working and then as a parent. And today I have been working in Lyon for over 15 years providing mental care, mental health care, teaching, and I work online dealing with various beneficiaries, various people, including expatriates, migrants, refugees, asylum seekers, uh, young um, immigrants, mixed couples, third culture kids. So my practice is not only focused on migrants and refugees. It's a broader uh, kind of practice. However, today we will be focusing on whoever comes to seek support from Samdara and Lispas. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, I will ask Emmanuel uh, Nyole some questions, but if you watch us on live, uh, feel free to ask uh, us your questions in the comments below, um, whenever you want, and um, we will ask them to um, Ms. Nyole. So, um, yeah, the first question I wanted to ask you um, was that um, we often hear um, about people experiencing cultural shock, um, but what does it actually mean? Like, uh, what could generate a shock when you arrive to a new country, for example, for people who arrive in France? So basically, it's going to pretty much depend on how they got to France. Sometimes it's a choice, sometimes it's not a choice. So we have to take into account the traumatic experiences that led people potentially to come and arrive in France. That means that they may have an idea, an expectation, some dreams about what France would look like, what it would feel like to escape from some critical humanitarian, political uh, identity, challenges, they escape from their home country and they arrive in a country where basically everything is new and the reality collides with their expectations. Our brains tend to establish some routines and get used to a given environment, even if it's a war place, even if it's critical, our brain adjust to a certain level of putting up and coping with the environment. 
when you arrive in a new culture, your brain needs to kind of press a reset button on everything, starting from your physiological components up to the language, the food, the politics, the religion, housing, the way people interact. So that means that we're going to be going through some phases. Initially, in the world of expatriation, people would have a given amount of time they would spend and then they would return home. When you seek asylum, when you're a refugee, potentially you've already had to uproot yourself from your home country, adjust to being on the way to somewhere potentially unknown, and France may be a place where you're going to stay or where you're going to, to spend a little while. Therefore, each situation is unique. And that's, that's one of the specificities of people on the move is that each individual is unique. And I stress that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we've observed some steps, some stages in the cycle of adjustment to a new mm -hmm. culture. First, there will be some kind of excitement or relief when you arrive in France, based on the fact that you are actually potentially stopping off somewhere. So that means that there will be some excitement, then frustration with what you find the reality to be. Potentially, gradually, there will be an adjustment phase, which may last for as long as you feel unsafe, exposed to some potential danger. You will then be going through a phase of acceptation and integrate as much as you can to the new country. And if you happen to return to your home country, then you have to consider the re-entry mm -hmm. phase with the reverse culture shock. The, the brain is going to be going through all sorts of adjustments. So the emotions are going to be going through roller coasters. It's emotional and physiological earthquake as a reaction to a very stressful situation that goes on for quite a while. Therefore, you could be shocked by maybe the weather conditions. Mm -hmm. You will find that you need to look for everything and you don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. So it's like a maze, mm -hmm. a cultural maze. There will be the frustration of the language barrier, mm -hmm. the unknown, the fear of the unknown, and a, a lack of bearings. So I don't know if you want us to go through every single stage mm -hmm. or if you feel that is enough yeah. or if people have any questions. Yeah. Maybe why not going more uh, deeper into the, um, the frustrating phase or adaptive phase? Yeah. So, so these stages of cultural adaptation, mm -hmm. within those phases, there is the culture shock. Okay. Let's okay. See. So yeah. The adjustment takes a while and mm -hmm. the culture shock is going to be taking a lot of space around this, this um, process. Mm -hmm. And the, the, at first, there is some kind of novelty. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be looking for things that match your mm -hmm. expectations. Sometimes it's going to be actually matching. Sometimes it's not going mm -hmm. to be matching. So the initial euphoric mm -hmm. phase where you 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 feel that you have got somewhere mm -hmm. it's going to soon wear off the novelty is going to soon wear off and you're going to experience some frustration and a, a lot of irritability where you feel like it's not what i was expecting mm -hmm. you're going to be uh, experiencing the frustration of finding your way through the administration. Mm -hmm. That means that you find that actually France is as much of a jungle 
as you would expect if you were going to travel in a, another foreign country. And mm. that's what people find is that they were expecting for it to be different mm. and in fact to be easy. To be easy. Mm. And in fact, it's not so easy. Mm. So you just feel like, well, I just want to escape. Mm. I just want this all to stop. Mm. Um, and you're going to experience some kind of tiredness, exhaustion mm. we'll discuss mm -hmm. maybe a little bit later. So when you are going around places, you feel that you are doubting your own identity. Mm -hmm. It's very challenging mm -hmm. because you don't find what you are being used to having mm -hmm. back home automatically. Mm -hmm. So you need to, to focus more. You need to think more about ways of expressing mm -hmm. yourself. And there, there will be some cultural mishaps mm -hmm. where you critical incidents when you interact with people so it's going to take time mm. for you to to learn the things then gradually you're going to identify some sort of routine for yourself mm. you're going to feel safe sometimes hopefully you won't have to wait for too long where you you can feel that there are safe places for yourself there will be some resistance as to do I do I go for what is there or is it a threat mm -hmm. to my own identity? And as you get to meet people, as you get to understand the ways around the culture, mm -hmm. you will be accepting to make some compromise. Mm -hmm. You will be understanding more. It, things will make more sense mm -hmm. to you. And therefore, based on your current mm -hmm. situation, in terms of visa, mm. in terms of housing, in mm. terms of resources, gradually you will feel that you are becoming part mm. of that life in the community. Thank you. And uh, we were talking about that. Like, um, so I, I was wondering: is it normal to feel um, that you have no energy when you get to a new country? That you uh, you struggle or even you're scared of going outside, go out of your bed, like, um, does it happen to lots of people? And it happens it to, it is, as I, as I tend to say, mm. it is a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. It is normal that because you are shifting from automatic piloting mm. to having to reassess every thing, single part of aspect of your life, mm -hmm. your brain switches to a kind of survival mode. Mm -hmm. So when your brain switches to survival mode, it's going to spend a lot of energy reassessing mm -hmm. what is safe, what is not safe. Mm -hmm until it can calm down and rest. So there's a lot of information that's being processed by your brain. And you need to, to, to take some time off to remove yourself from this constant, long-lasting sensory mm -hmm. stimulation mm -hmm. that is just absolutely exhausting. Mm -hmm. And you're not there for a holiday. You, you've come here to stay. And it's very important for you to understand. Mm. So you have to focus all the time. So mm. it is absolutely normal that you feel exhausted mm. because it is an exhausting process. Mm. And it is healthy for people to take time off, to rest, to rest, mm. to sleep, to assess, to update their achievements. Mm so that the ground you walk on feels stronger. Mm. You don't feel that you're walking on eggshells. Mm. You know who you can trust. You know what you can rely on. And step mm. by step, you will feel like it's okay to go out. But the worst fear is the unknown. Mm. So the more known the unknown becomes, mm. the safer you will feel mm. and your brain will remove itself from the survival mode mm. and will be able to express the emotions, make sense of what's happening. That's only after you've come out of this environment that is so critical that you yeah. cannot trust. 
And what does it mean, assess your achievements? Do you have... That means that you have to celebrate your success. Mm. Okay, it's like, today I found a shop mm -hmm. where I can buy food mm. that I can actually eat. Mm. Today I went and I met someone. It's like, you, mm. as if you had a list of, of mm. tickets, mm. of vouchers for feel-good vouchers, mm. where you would say... Well, today I was able to work out how I can mm. buy transportation tickets. Today I know how to say bonjour, because mm. bonjour is the sesame to meeting mm. people. It's like the, the key to relationships mm. locally. True. Okay, so it's important to be proud to of feel, what you feel you've done you something. Do. There's, okay. so much, there's so much to be done yeah. that it's good to, to get some smile on your face and to feel good about okay. yourself okay. because you lose a lot about your self-esteem mm. and you, you, you're not confident about your achievements you don't mm. feel efficient yeah because it's like you know being back to being a child where you couldn't express yourself where you mm. can, couldn't find your way even though you're an adult well-educated person mm. you are being put in a place where you you don't feel good about yourself yeah you may even go through some depression because of, of what's happening, which is healthy in a way, mm. because you come out of your habits, so it enables you to get back into a new lifestyle and new routine. However, it's good to be able to, to have your own resources mm. to feel good about yourself. Because yeah. the situation has a, a great impact on your self-esteem. A lot. Right. Okay. The way people look at you, mm. the way you feel that, you don't know anyone, mm -hmm. you, you lose all sense of belonging mm -hmm. to a community, you just uprooted you on your own. Yeah, I see. Okay. And um, I was also wondering about language, because you talked about it earlier, um, uh, where I work at Les Pass, uh, so we welcome everyday people from uh, all over the world, and uh, we often uh, hear people saying that they uh, they need, they must uh, learn French, but people that actually already speak quite well English, uh, French, not English, that already speak quite well, and uh, we, it's always a surprise for us. And uh, why do you think, like, uh, or maybe do you think that uh, people can maybe sometimes be uh, uh, um, like? Um, ashamed or embraced with their accent or level of French and why those people that speak quite well French have this urge to learn more and more French and be better? Well in matter of language there's what you hear mm -hmm. someone speak and there's how one feels about the language they are using to express themselves. Mm -hmm. So the language is a very major cultural component and identity. Mm. It's part of my identity. Mm -hmm. My native language is something that is all over my body, my cells. It's very sensory. It's very emotional. Mm -hmm. It's really who I am. And when you learn a new language it goes to another part of your brain maybe no not so emotional mm -hmm. maybe a bit more academic mm -hmm. maybe more what the message you would like to you you just look for the word you know mm -hmm. to to just put everything you wish to express mm -hmm. and it doesn't fit so it's very frustrating for people to express themselves so it puts you back into a, a regressive mm. state where you feel you are maybe five years old, mm. when six you years old, when you start language. to learn, mm. exactly. And, and you're an adult and you need to get by and you need to survive and you don't even know what you are mm. feeling. There's some kind of emergency to express mm. yourself. So that is extremely frustrating. And because there's a it's challenging for your identity. Mm -hmm. You feel you cannot embrace the, the culture. You cannot be part of the culture of your host country. So that's, that's what goes on for, for you. 
when you're trying to express mm -hmm. yourself and get by. And also in, in France, the French language has a, a very specific role, uh, a perception of who is French, who is not French. Mm -hmm. And the, the French language has this kind of role as detecting foreigners. Mm. So people will kind of be maybe kind to you, or maybe they think they are being kind to you, but from the, 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 the people's point of view, mm. they feel that if one questions their accent mm. or one asks them, even though it's kind of a nice way of saying, mm. that's a lovely accent, you know, where, mm. where are you from? it is perceived more as being mocked mm. for their accent or being not up to mm. the standards mm. that they think may be enable them to be part, be accepted mm. as equal to the French people. Mm. So the language thing is very specific. I think what helps people is once they understand that they will never be French. Mm and and we we don't want them to be mm -hmm. anyone else than who they are it's just about being functional and being reassured and mm -hmm. being able to express themselves maybe in some different ways maybe in support groups maybe mm -hmm. in all the workshops that you mm -hmm. have at les pass where you just feel you belong mm -hmm. it's a it's a, it's people would like to belong to mm -hmm. the french culture so it's more about the perception they think people out of them when they speak French. It's more about that. It's yeah. it's like a a, a glass mm. a glass panel, you know, mm. between accent, no accent, I would be more mm. like everybody else. People would like you to comply. Mm. And you're not good enough. That's what you mm. that's what you think. You're not good enough. Yeah. Again, because you have this weakness in terms of self-esteem, mm. that's going to press one of the buttons again. Okay, I see. And because we were talking about language, um, how how can we do when we get to a new country to uh, make some friends, uh, get to know some people uh, when you first don't master the language, but also maybe sometimes even more uh, important when you don't uh, know the codes uh, to uh, for appreci appreciating them. Um, how can we do it uh, where, where we work? Lots of people uh, talk to us about this issue, like uh, they struggle to make friends because they don't know the codes. So again, uh, I, I think what we can say is coming to France is specific. Mm -hmm. Each culture you, mm. you, you come to meet, it's going to be different. So have myself having moved from one country to the next, being in a different social mm. status, uh, age, etc. We can't say in general we could, but basically what mm -hmm. I think people are interested in when they come to Les Passes is mm -hmm. how do I adjust to the French system, mm -hmm. which is more uh, a, a place where people tend to do things as in, in their own groups, mm -hmm. they, they, they're not waiting for, mm -hmm. for new people to come into their group, really. Mm -hmm. um, I experienced this coming back mm -hmm. where I found comfortable, I found that it was comfortable for me to interact with people who were used to moving. Mm -hmm. So to me, the, 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 the things, the one proverb says, while in Rome, do as Romans do. Mm -hmm. So I would say first observe mm -hmm to figure out the codes. Mm. So see how people work, go to the markets, mm -hmm. watch videos, watch films, read books about the way people do things and try to visualize do's and don'ts. Mm. Um, in France, there's going to be questions about um, how you greet people. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do we shake hands? Mm -hmm. Do we kiss? Mm -hmm. Do we touch? Do we not touch? How do we say hello when you get to, yeah. to meet uh, someone? When you yeah. meet someone, 
And then there's going to be the question, do I say to, do I say vous? Mm -hmm. uh, as a sign of respect, but mm -hmm. things do change and people tend mm -hmm. to, to be maybe using the vous for a more formal mm -hmm. interaction with people as a sign of respect mm -hmm. or to would be more intimate, more mm -hmm. friendly. So there's a kind of social scale as connected with the words you will be using. Uh, also, I found when I was working uh, with uh, with French social workers mm -hmm. interacting with children from African background, that they would be the, the 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 social workers would be giving out. They would be unhappy with the fact that the child would look at them in mm -hmm. the eyes when they were interacting, and when the parent was there, the child would look down mm. and the thing is in one culture mm. looking down is a sign of respect for the elderly for the senior people mm. and in our culture if you your eyes don't look at my mm. eyes i'm going to say mm. that person has got something to hide mm. it's not being honest with me mm. so it's really important mm -hmm. to to identify how people interact and maybe discuss this mm -hmm. maybe go to workshops mm -hmm. to understand the the you know the codes mm -hmm. um i asked around to some you know friends mm -hmm. uh, refugee friends or you know what what mm -hmm. was shocking for them or what they did so uh one one girl suggested and i noticed that people were doing a lot of volunteering mm. so volunteering means that you don't need to have any visa mm. you don't you just want to be yourself it's a give and take mm. relationship where you're going to learn from the way people you know work things and they're going to give you and you're going to give so that's that's kind of that a, can a, be a way to balance yeah. new people yeah okay to meet and to see how people are, are doing and to, to, to learn from, from being practicing okay. and feel you belong to a group. Mm. And um, how can maybe someone um, get to learn and understand this, the culture of the, those countries? So I, I, I understand that you, uh, one of your advice is to observe um is it also okay i don't know to ask questions to people where you meet or i don't know document yourself on other ways uh well you can it, it's quite tricky to interact yeah so so basically it's not that easy to go and That's speak true. to people yeah so one one friend of ours who who, who came as a refugee mm. uh told me told us that he started smoking Mm. Uh, he said, I don't usually smoke, but I started smoking because that was a way of, mm. of asking for a light or, mm. or talking to people. Creates a contact yeah. with people. Yeah. Uh, people, are, people are quite scared of mm. foreigners. You know, they are in the, the bubble and you come to them and you speak with an accent. And mm. by the time, you know, they connect to the fact that, mm. that it's not the usual thing. Uh, there is some kind of mm -hmm. visual reaction that doesn't create trust, mm -hmm. you know? So you, you can go to places like if you come with your family, mm -hmm. you can go as a, as a parent mm -hmm. to, to what we call the PTA, a parents teacher association. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, the, the school mm -hmm. parents association where you can interact, you can, offer your services mm. to maybe bring you can bring mm. it's it's more like a, a give and take relationship or go to places that welcome foreigners mm -hmm. so again there's a kind of graduation in what is available for migrants mm. refugees mm. and what is available for expats mm. mixed cultured families mm. etc so in my practice mm -hmm. I develop a lot of networking mm -hmm. encouragements. So I, I do tell people to, to shift themselves from where people would like to put them mm -hmm. and take part in the international related mm -hmm. networking as part of the international networking, mm -hmm. because often there's a, 
a kind of um, perception that if you are a foreigner, if you're a refugee, you would not be very educated, you would not be very clever because you cannot speak the language. So there is some kind of reaction that pushes you into a corner that you only can get out of in going to classes, mm -hmm. taking part in interaction with the uh, you know, uh, singer, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. There are things, places like Act for Ref, mm -hmm. there is Accueil Ville de France mm -hmm. International, where people speak English, mm -hmm. French, and yeah. other languages. There is Internations, there is a women's networking professional group. Mm -hmm. So there are things, I think initially, they will help people. And then if you have a job, you can maybe practice mm -hmm. your, your, your job. Mm -hmm. But that means that you already have the paperwork, the yeah. visa, which could take a long time and can be very frustrating. Yeah. Sure. And uh, the, these places you talked about are in most of the big cities, like uh, Singa, they exist in other places, the other networks. But uh, for people that doesn't, don't live in big cities in France, for example, um, and um, who are not parents, so they cannot make a you know, social network with school. Are there, are there other options you would recommend in well, the countryside, for example? A, a, a great, a, a large aspect mm. of your identity is also your spiritual mm -hmm. practice. Uh, what is different about France is that it's a so-called lay country. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the spiritual aspect of your life does not Mm -hmm. go as much in the public place as mm -hmm. it could have been in your home country. Mm -hmm. So based on my experience, when you were looking for uh, welcoming groups, mm -hmm. when you were looking for community, you would go to where you pray. Mm -hmm. In Lyon, if you, if you pray, uh, you could go to a church, you can go to a mosque, you can go to mm -hmm. all the spiritual communities that host you so in the churches mm -hmm. in the french villages ideally there would be some welcoming mm -hmm. people because that's that's more what they will mm -hmm. be also in the the commune mm -hmm. in the mary mm -hmm. there will be a, a, a library mm -hmm. so you can go to to mm -hmm. spend some time in the library, you can look out for the different associations mm -hmm. and give a hand or mm -hmm. take part in free or not so expensive activities, mm -hmm. maybe walk, maybe take part in mm -hmm. preparing some mm -hmm. things again for charity mm -hmm. where people could welcome you and you can offer your, your knowledge about your own culture mm -hmm. and do some mm -hmm. swaps where you integrate yourself in sharing practices you would have in your home country as an exchange to what people show you about local festivals mm -hmm. and the the main bank holidays. Mm. I see. So there are some good ideas to keep in mind. To you need a lot of energy. Yeah. It's you changing. Need, you mm. need to you need to feel sufficiently good about yourself so it's really step by step you may be very lucky yeah. and and meet welcoming people mm -hmm. and but you may also hit on to racism mm -hmm. which is not you don't have like a big sign saying mm -hmm. uh, don't come here we are mm -hmm. we don't like foreigners but from my practice with mm -hmm. my patients i i tend now to be more, you know, proactive and and actually discuss racism, mm -hmm. which generates a lot of relief mm -hmm. for people because they thought it was something about a personal failure mm -hmm. and uh, an ability to that they don't manage to 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 connect okay. yeah. that it's they're doing it wrong mm -hmm. or they don't understand why people. Mm. don't answer the calls mm. because they are used to just going out and and practice hospitality yeah. and that's not always the practice here mm. so it's kind of once once you tell people don't doubt yourself mm. 
this is what is happening. Uh, this is how maybe you can get around this reluctancy. It's often ignorance or fear from people. Mm -hmm. And then once you get to know each other, things will get easier sometimes. Yeah. But some people say, well, you know, I'm trying to adjust to France and I'm trying to stay here and I don't understand what's wrong. I have choice for going to other places. Well, at some stage they decide, you know, to ex mm. not to exhaust themselves and to mm. to move on to places where they would feel welcome. Okay, I see. And uh, um, could you suggest maybe some tips um, to help people cope with um, homesickness? We we talked about it earlier that uh, um, the experience of Uh, moving into a new country can be very exhausting, but also that sometimes it can make you feel really depressed and sometimes also may, uh, you can go through a real depression. Um, yeah, what can help to face with homesickness? And um, yeah, is it like, uh, uh, do we have to experience homesickness and uh, how to deal with it? Well, I think there are times where you will be longing for home. Uh, home is where your roots are mm -hmm. and where your identity or your great mm -hmm. part of your identity is connected to still. Mm -hmm. So it, it's normal mm -hmm. to experience homesickness at times. It may come at the time of a special festival mm -hmm. when you... When I ended up working on a Christmas day on mm -hmm. a building site in Algeria, it felt weird mm -hmm. to be working on a Christmas day. When you have people coming to look for uh, holidays at the time, at the mm -hmm. end of Ramadan, and there's no proper holiday, like it's kind of things that you have to do by yourself, or mm -hmm. when you celebrate Diwali, or when you celebrate your, your national very strong important key mm. events and your family is not there it reminds you that you're not mm -hmm. back home so basically it is normal to feel that way again i encourage people to take some me time and connect with the emotions that they are experiencing what is me time me time is time i spend with myself okay i sit down i'm feeling sad i connect with my homesickness i don't play I hide don't and seek to avoid avoid it okay i take some time so I... it's important when you feel sad because you're homesick so because you're sad about not being in your country right now or with your relative most most of the times uh it's good not to always try to avoid it but also like really try to be sad like uh, experience it well the thing is that you it, it may mm. not be like one day homesick yeah it's going to be i'm not feeling right mm. so it's more your your body has mm. been you know something triggers mm -hmm. that uneasiness that sadness so it's important that you take some time on a regular basis to say how am i feeling Mm -hmm. same as the time when you you get your your tickets mm -hmm. of achievements to say okay what is my body telling me mm -hmm. what do i need what is wrong with mm -hmm. with my body what is the message the message may be homesickness mm -hmm. okay the message may be frustration but in the case of homesickness it's important that you you go and explore what you're actually feeling mm -hmm. what you miss why you are missing this and what your need is mm. in order to keep in contact with your home mm. because if you try to keep away from your home culture to adjust hoping that it's going to help you be french or mm. help you being french sometimes it's important that you listen to your own music because mm. your whole memory your whole body Mm -hmm. vibrates with your music so the music you used to listen in your in your home, home country your okay. home music yeah you cook home meal homemade mm -hmm. food so that you have all the sensory mm -hmm. stimuli of mm -hmm. home so i'm cooking my food i 
I carry on doing what I learned to do from my elderly. I teach my children the recipes. Mm. I have the taste. I have the smell. It feels as if I had my mm. home mm. with me. Yes. And I feel that I am being myself. Mm. Holy from the depth of myself. Keep tracks of the traditional days you celebrate, things mm. that are important for you. Uh, listen to your body. And if you want to be coming into the here and now, mm. practice some anchoring. So when you are feeling good, you anchor into the ground with breathing exercises mm. or different exercise walking helps also mm. process the emotions, mm. motion, emotions, mm -hmm. on the move, you walk, walk, walk. And if you can, plan for trips back home. Mm. In some cases, you cannot go back home. But if it's possible, plan for going home or meet some fellow mm -hmm. countrymen or countrywomen. Have some gatherings where you feel you being yourself. Does it, does it make you, why does it make us feel good to meet people from our home country when we are in a new country? Because it gives you a break. Mm. It gives you a break from having to speak another language. Mm. It gives you a break from having to explain everything, from mm. having to justify yourself. You can have a little bit of nagging time. Nagging time is when you can say, what is difficult for you mm. because it's not taken as a criticism mm. when you when you say this is difficult for me mm. uh, you find that if you speak about that to french people they are they don't know what to say so they feel that you know if mm. if, if it's so bad why why did you come here mm. when when you are with your people you just are back home for a little yeah a, a short period of time So it gives you some kind of comfort. Yeah. And then you can exchange tips about this is the place where you can find this. This is the person who's going to help you do that so that you can have your network within the French culture. But mm. after people have experienced it in your own group and can help you make bridges. Yeah. Okay. And um, earlier we were, to, we were talking about um, observations of codes um, of people, how they behave and everything. Um, would you say that uh, sometimes we need to change our habits? Uh, sometimes we feel like we need to change our habits, uh, the way we speak, uh, where we behave in order to behave the same way as the local population of your host country. Uh, so what do you think about that? Do, do we, it can be like a, a solution to uh, try to imitate um, people and maybe uh, uh, change sometimes your personality or? Well, it's, it's kind of a push and pull mm -hmm. process because people wish you would be like them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think basically you've got to feel within yourself that mm -hmm. you're being authentic and you're feeling yourself mm -hmm. as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So you're going to compromise about some of the things when you're outside, mm -hmm. but when you're with yourself, you've got to feel that you are connected with people that allow you to be yourself. Mm -hmm. I asked one uh, refugee friend and what she told me was, I tried to connect with friends mm -hmm. being like them. Mm -hmm. And I decided that would not work because I would not be myself. Mm -hmm. So she, she switched to being with friends where she could be authentic. Mm -hmm. When half of yourself doesn't exist or is not allowed to exist, mm -hmm. You can't live that way forever. Mm. There's some part that's hurting and yeah. crying out for existing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you cannot feel good. Okay. And um, yeah, a bit in the, in the same um, 
spirits. Um, do you think sometimes, like in France, uh, lots of uh, people talk about um, integration, assimilation? Uh, these topics is coming uh, a lot on the public space. Um, do you think sometimes uh, people should forget about their native culture or set it aside, uh, set aside their identity to to be better integrated in their host country? Or do you think it can help? Uh, when you're asking me this question, I think no way. <laughs> <laughs> Is she serious? Uh, there will be things that make you consider mm -hmm. uh, questioning mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. There are very strong things about what is expected from you to fit in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what, one important thing I think for, for women, mm -hmm. for example, is I was brought up thinking that if I don't wear a headscarf, mm -hmm. it's as if I was walking in the street naked. Mm -hmm. And you escape uh, all sorts of things to arrive in France. Mm -hmm. And it's as if this would continue the, the humiliations, the, mm -hmm. the threat of, of being protected when people expect you not to wear your headscarf. Mm -hmm. If people send you the message to integrate mm -hmm. and don't allow you to integrate as you are, mm -hmm. I find this quite disrespectful. However, this seems to be the condition to accessing jobs, to accessing social places. So it's really difficult. So the, the, the observations show that there's a gray zone where people would have to live if they want to to keep some of the things intact. So some people will look for jobs online mm -hmm. or see, some people will pursue the way they were living before. Mm -hmm. And I find it very difficult to give tips mm -hmm. to deal with that. Um, I would say it's more about trying to meet people, as we said before, mm -hmm. to try to understand what's at stake to discuss it with your family and to to make choices based on how long you're going to be spending mm -hmm. in your in the country and see you know what mm -hmm. you can negotiate maybe you need to refer to your spiritual mm -hmm. uh, mentors or maybe you need to refer to your your elderly back home to your parents your grandparents and 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 update uh what was relevant culturally, mm -hmm. what is acceptable culturally, and what you have to do in state of survival, mm -hmm. because that's really tricky. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you have to make compromises, yeah. I would say. Okay. But I would say that there will be a life inside and a life outside for you. Mm -hmm. What you have to give up sometimes is your your authority as a parent, mm -hmm. your your position of a guide to your children, mm -hmm. when you don't speak your language, the, the, you don't speak mm -hmm. French language, your children go to school, they act as translators and they become the guides for you in a foreign country. So, so there's so many things that shift yeah. in your identity that we could spend forever discussing but basically, uh, you don't forget about, you, you, you can never mm -hmm. forget about your native culture, I don't think. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Thank you. And maybe was one last question. Um, so this cultural adaptation um, can be uh, very challenging and makes us feel uh, quite sad uh, often. So. Um, lots of people are wondering who uh, you could suggest that they confide uh, about their problems with. Um, mostly, uh, how uh, not to worry their family circles. Uh, 
and uh, yeah, to whom they could turn to. What do you think about that? I think that uh, we have different ways of perceiving how much we share mm. about our concerns based on our mm. cultural upbringing. So there are things that we we can not to discuss, mm -hmm. or there are like kind of social uh, layout of what mm -hmm. comes out of which layer. Mm -hmm. um, I think you really have to assess mm -hmm. who you can trust. Maybe you start talking about things indirectly. Mm -hmm. um, with your family back home, it's important that you keep in touch. Mm -hmm and you also have to assess what they are able to hear mm -hmm. because at the same time they may be living through some war zone or mm -hmm. some critical times so i think again each situation is unique mm -hmm. you have to maybe make a deal with people so as what you say what you don't say maybe some relatives may be ill mm -hmm. or dying so sometimes people don't share bad news yep. they want to keep some kind of myth of having a great life in france where mm -hmm. in fact they're not having such a great life so it's difficult because there's a whole myth at stake mm -hmm. and you have to navigate with your own support network as as you go and and you learn from your experience as well sometimes you speak to the wrong person and it you know, it goes back to mm. maybe being being uh, uh, having a negative consequence on, on what you what you it impacts the way it impacts your maybe if you speak to your social worker mm. and there's a misunderstanding and mm. you switch uh, from one benefit to another. Mm. So again, you tiptoe yeah. and you you need to to learn as you go because there's no definite answer to that okay thank you very much for this You're talk welcome. it was very very interesting so uh, we're very glad to for having you here and thank you uh, for having me yeah and thanks for um everyone who watched this on live or uh, after on replay and um feel free to suggest any uh, other topics you would like to discuss um we will invite uh, in the following month uh, other uh, very interesting people um, so feel free to make your suggestions and uh, yeah we say goodbye bye bye nice day have a nice day bye bye, bye.